Hello, students. We're going to talk about lines and angles today. I'm so excited, Mr. Butterworth. I am thrilled beyond belief. Ooh, vertical angles. I remember those. Vertical angles. So those are ones that kind of do this little, this little, this little thingy ding. And we could say it's angle one and angle two. Cool. I like it. Uh, but that's not correct based on what they say. They want angle one and angle. Oh, one three. and angle three. I didn't. I didn't read. Mm. Sorry, I forgot how to read that. So three. And cool. it says both are adjacent to angle two. That means both are next to angle two. Ah, so I can. Oh no! <laughs> I'll get rid of mine. All right. All right, and then they give us some equationy stuff. I'm just going to write that 10x minus four here. And three is six x plus sixteen. Okay. And we learned that vertical angles are congruent. So we can say ten x minus four equals six x plus sixteen. And because we know that congruent means that their measures are equal. So that's why we can set those equal to each other. Yes. Cool. All right, so solving that, I'm going to minus 6x to both sides and add 4 to both sides, doing two steps at once because I'm crazy. Ooh, that is bold, Mr. Carlson, bold. Yeah. 4x plus 0 is equal to 0 plus 20, which means that x is going to be 5 after we divide both sides by 4. And now we're done. The x is 5, so we're done, right? Absolutely. Oh, no. We want to know the measure of angle 2. So we got to do oh, some more stuff. Man. I want to plug it into angle one. Cool. So I'm going to do 10 times 5 minus 4. So 10 times 5 is 50 minus 4 is 46. Nice. I like that we got the same number there. That means that we did our math right. It's so exciting. Now, one and two are adjacent. They're next to each other. Do they have some other relationship? To me, it looks like they are along this line and that there are only two of them here, which means that together they're a linear pair. Oh, those are supplementary, right? They are. And I know supplementary because it's an S add up to 180, not 188. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> so that means if we know that angle one is 46, angle two is 180, I'm going to use your 180, minus 46. So that's like 140, 134. I like it. The measure of angle two is 134 degrees. Um, now, Mr. Butterworth, I had a couple students yesterday that were talking to me about having trouble with supplementary angles uh, in terms of equations and stuff because they were tr having trouble dealing with whether they should be adding or subtracting. Would it have been okay for that student to say, okay, this is 46? And I'll call this Z because I don't know what it is. 46 plus Z equals 180. So that we are still talking about adding those two to get to 180. Or do we have to do this, this subtracting? Well, my step is simply your next step. So if you oh. take both sides, then we're in the same place. Cool. So that'll be fine. So these aren't two different things. This is the same thing looking at from slightly different tweaks. Yeah, it's like I, I kind of skipped a step. Cool. All right. Uh, so here we're talking about what we're doing today. I'm going to move some stuff around. Uh, we're going to be looking at some relationships between things in space, specifically looking at something called a transversal. Space is the final frontier. I heard that one time. I have heard that. I can hear some music in my head now. Not all lines and planes intersect. Okay. Parallel lines are coplanar lines that do not intersect. Skew okay. lines are non coplanar. They do not intersect and are not parallel. And I don't know about you, Mr. Butterworth, but I've talked about this with my students already uh, because we had a question that involved trying to find the intersection of two lines that were like uh, line AE and line CB here. Yes. Where there is no intersection. And we did call those skew lines. That is true. Um, so I feel like this is kind of 
formalizing things that we've already talked about? Yes, I uh, agree. We've, we've mentioned these things. We've talked about parallel planes like the ceiling and the floor and that sort of thing. Um, there are two things I'd like to talk about here. The first is the symbol for talking about things being parallel. I think that's really important for us to mention. That just means is parallel to. Uh, and we just use that because it looks like parallel lines and we are lazy and not going to write the word parallel that we always forget how to spell. Although the trick that I've always thought about is parallel has the parallel symbol in it. And that's how I remember to have two L's. I was thinking uh, that same thing. The other thing I want to talk about are the arrows that are on the pairs of parallel lines. You can't really see the vertical ones here, but they're there. Um, oh, I see what you're talking about. Okay. What do those mean? That's like we use tick marks to show that things are congruent. We use arrows to show that things are parallel to each other, especially in something like this, where we have, frankly, quite a lot of different things that are parallel to each other. Uh, it helps us identify that uh, AE is parallel to BF and AD is parallel to BC, but those are not parallel to the other pairs and things like that. Is that why the AD and BC lines have two arrows? It is. E and BF only have one? That's exactly it. What if I wanted to say that CG was parallel to BF? Would I use that one arrow thing because that's also parallel to AE? I would say you would, so that we're showing that all three of those are parallel to each other. Mm, okay, sweet. All right. Um, anything else here that's useful to talk about? No, I, I think don't think so. Ooh, I'm going to highlight this segment while you start talking. That seems like a great Ed Puzzle question. We should add that question right now. So we're going to try to say which segments are parallel to A, B. So our choices of segments are CD, CG. I'm just going to write down all yep. of the segments, not necessarily just parallel ones. Just so Mr. Carlson knows where I'm going, because we definitely did not prepare that. HE, but I'm going to write that as EH, because I wrote the E first. DH. You already a had DH. D. Oh, because I wrote HD. Yep, <laughs> that, that's why I'm highlighting them, so we can. Uh... <laughs> okay. Um, EH I got, AE I do not have, um, AD I did, EF I do not have, and BF I do not have. That's supposed to be a B, turned into a D. And then FG and BC, wow, there's a lot of them, Whew. FG and BC. So those are all the segments I see, I think. Cool. Now we just have to figure out which ones are parallel. Well, if they hit AB, we're not parallel. So that knocks out BF and AE and BC and AD, because those all hit segment mm -hmm. AB. Oh, I missed EH and FG also. No, those don't hit AB. Okay. Now what do I do? Hmm. Well, the definition that we were given on the previous page said that parallel lines do not intersect and are coplanar. Uh, so the first thing I'd like to do is to uh, identify the ones that are still left on the same plane or at either of the planes that this touches. So is that like the left side of the box and the top of the box? Yeah, so I'm looking at like uh, the top of the box, it looks like CD is on the same plane. And it's going in the same direction, which is really kind of how I prefer to think about things being parallel. Um, and I'm gonna talk about why I, I like that definition better. Uh, and then the same thing, the left side of the box, EF, is going in the same direction as well. So that would be something that is parallel too. Um, the reason that I don't like uh, the definition and then this particular picture to try to talk about this is that uh, when we say that things are coplanar, 
what we really mean is that we can draw a plane through both of those at the same time. Not that we see a plane that someone has already drawn on the paper. Oh, so you're saying that there might be one that's parallel to AB, but we don't have a plane drawn in my picture. Exactly. And that one is going to be the one that's going in the same direction, which again is going to be GH. And I'm just going to use my awesome math skills and art skills. If I were to draw a plane diagonally through this box, so it was like cutting it into two triangular prisms, uh, that plane would have both AB and GH. Um, so thinking like using the definition that we were given for this is a little bit harder because of that. Uh, and I want to make sure we talk a little bit about that. So are you saying that CG, HD, EH, and FG are not, not parallel, they're not intersecting, and they're not in the same plane as AB? I agree with all of those statements. So that means that CG, HG, EF, and FG are skew. They are. Those would all be skew lines. Well, skew segments. Yeah, skew segments, sorry. So this oh. one talks about those skew segments. So I think that we don't even need to really say much, and the kids can just answer the Ed Puzzle question. I think that's one. fair. I just wanted to highlight the segment that we're looking at because they, they changed the segment on us. Because it's oh, that's tricky. I see what they did. Cool. All and right. And this next one, which isn't showing up, oh, there it is. There um, it. What are two pairs of parallel planes? So parallel planes are planes that don't touch each other. To name a plane, you need three letters. So but you maybe, can also use four. You could, but you need at least three. Um, so maybe I pick A, B, C. That's the top of this box, and E, F, G. That's the bottom. Top is parallel to the bottom. Cool. I like that. Uh, I'm going to pick the front and the back. Uh, so I'm going to say that plane A, D, H, those are the three letters in the front, is parallel to plane, I'm going to say B, C, G. Do you have to pick the ones in order? Could you have picked B, C, F? I absolutely could have. Any three points that are on the same plane, I like to think about them, uh, sorry, I should rephrase that. Any three non-collinear points that are on the same plane. Um, I like to talk about, you have to choose points that would make a triangle. Um, Got it, okay. Because if you're choosing three that are on the same line, we can kind of spin the plane around there. We don't know which one we're talking about. So the only ones we've missed in this picture are plane ABE is parallel to plane DCG, DCG. All right, two segments parallel to plane BCGF. So B, C, G, F, that's the back plane. I'm just going to kind of shade that in. And things that are parallel to this are things that will not intersect with this plane. Mr. Butterworth, would I be crazy in saying that those are things that are on the front plane? Yeah, because all of these that I'm kind of crossing out are either in the plane or intersecting with the plane. So something like AD, which is not in the plane, uh, would work? Yes. And like EH also would work. Could you pick AE? I could, and that's kind of interesting because now we have things that are not parallel to each other, but are parallel to the back plane. That's kind of cool. That is, that's a little wacky. So now we have um, a picture where we have this thing called a transversal, which is labeled with a T. And it, com it comes from the idea transverse means to cut across something. I knew you were going to give us some, some word background. It's a line that intersects two or more coplanar lines at distinct points. 
So that would be that curly Q L and then the M. And then we have eight angles formed by two lines, L, the transversal and the two lines. So I'm gonna number those. And the job of the student is to figure out which ones are interior angles and which are exterior angles. I like it. So they I imagine that this might be a, uh, a good ed puzzle question. It might be. And now, usually when I do this in class, we don't have a big, big issue. So I'm just going to write them down. Three, four, five, and six are interior. They're between L and M. And then one, two, seven, and eight are exterior. They're outside of L and M. Cool. All right, so then we've got this alternate interior angles. Uh, I always kind of remember this as that things that are on the inside and then on alternate sides of this transversal. I like that they use alternate interior angles and then use opposite sides in the definition. These are also called opposite interior angles in some sources, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, so things that are across from each other, but on the inside. And we don't oh. have any relationship between those angles right now. We're simply defining some vocabulary. Ooh, same side interior angles. I bet those are on the same side. I think so too, and they're on the interior. Mm -hmm. And then the same side of the transversal. It's nice when words say what they represent. Do you find it a little confusing in this, that picture that four and five were not red? I do. I don't, I, yeah, I'm just gonna. I'm gonna roll with it. I was yep. just, I, it threw me off. So corresponding angles, students always find them confusing because they're not obvious based on the name. And they have some requirements. So they, one's, in, one's an interior angle. So one interior, one's exterior. They're on the same side of the transversal. Uh, Mr. Butterworth here, the writing is not showing up on the screen. I'm on the wrong slide. I'll try again. One interior. <laughs> One exterior. If you look at the previous slide, I bet it's there. And then <laughs> they're on the same side of the transversal. So um, there's requirements there. I often ignore those requirements entirely uh, and find it a lot easier to talk about the position. Like they do in that definition. Uh, but they also include same side of the transversal. I don't care. Well, but the, in terms of the corresponding position, is that what you're talking about? And I, I, like, I'll be like, okay, top left goes with top left. I, like I circled the top right in both of those cases. <laughs> so top okay, right goes with though. top right. Yeah. Uh, and I find that a lot easier than trying to have like fit these different conditions uh, because that ends up getting lost in the steps in my head. Um, not that, again, that's any different than one or the other versions of this. Right. The other one I'd add on this is that they can't be on the same line. So based on your one interior, one exterior, same side, six and seven could fit that. Mm. So, I should, so I should add to that one interior, one exterior, and non-adjacent. Yeah. There we go. Cool. Okay, alternate exterior angles. I bet we can see where this one's going. See, and they color coded those ones. We're looking at the exterior and things that are on the opposite sides of the transversal, one on the left, one on the right, or one on the top, one on the bottom, we're flipped around the other way. So could I call these opposite exterior also? We sure could. Okay. All right, and so this now, is a great Ed Puzzle question. I like it. We're looking for alternate interior angles here. Cool. Do we want to go through this one or just kind of leave it as an Ed Puzzle? I'm going to leave it as a question, but then I'm going to tell them that the answer is definitely C. Mm, I like it. 
And then this is your exit ticket. So this is a great thing for you to figure out and then talk to us in class about any confusions you may have. I agree.